traffic and some nights ago The father was talking to me, King Olo Telling me that so free will come again But that's the reason why I come here now to explain To get them on your knees and pray So free coming again Vincent Chan be aware Especially the people in Chateaubile Well, for Chateaubile when we run to Chomoka And if I hear how they're laughing on kia 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 Some people say how we making joke How we see facts and take it for so free smoke In 1979, I think it was around um, April 13th to Friday the sky was looking real strange, clouds going up, and then this mushroom started clouds, you know, and we know something was going on, and the moon was really shining. I was baking cross buns. So while we were putting the cross buns in the oven, we heard this big explosion. But inside, we hear like a little, some little, like, some little grub stone coming down on the galvanized, but it was not rain, you know, but I didn't know what was dropping. So I thought we were going to say, you know, and the girl when I was up there, and you know, when he peep out. He said, Angie, look out. When I look out, if you see the mountain, outside was dark like midnight. Martin woke me up about 7 o'clock in the morning, and he said, Mary, I've got some bad news for you. The volcano is erupting. I said, yeah, right. This guy came up from Chateaubile and he started to sound the trumpet. Rosal people, are wake up. Suffer a blow, suffer a blow. The call of Chateaubile is on the road. Wake up. The news spread like wildfire in a few minutes time. And then everybody, you know, up and down getting to get ready, but I could not have get one thing to work with just what I have on my skin. So we ran in and we got ourselves ready, pick up our bags with little clothing. We go down to Chateauville and then after we go down there, we see the government sending things for people, but I did not go on the road, I go on the sea in a boat. And by the time we got up to the bus, there were lots of people, children, women. We managed to board the bus. Didn't know where we were heading for. Children were crying, you know, people were panicking and so on. Because it was our first experience. But we try to remain calm. <laughs> we helped somewhat in the evacuation. I go out in the country or to Georgetown and get transportation to get people in. We, you know, felt very, very responsible for the, uh, for the village people. And uh, we had to try and get them out of there the best way we could. We evacuated about 400 people. The question is, where did the people go? So we sort of contacted government and said to them, where can we send our people? At the time, I was a boy scout, scout leader. I was mostly based at the Bowery Secondary School, along with some cadets from the grammar school cadets, policemen, salaries, and teachers, and I get in touch with the police and then we start to open the buildings, the community centre, the schools. We got them out there into the into the schools and so on. We, we were lucky and we having the estate were able to provide bananas and we had a village shop. We opened that up to, to everybody and to, they were okay for the first 48 hours and then you know we had to then start leaning on the government to provide for the for everybody. The government used to supply food stuff, no one then. But from that, we will, we don't have to furnish our own thing. Like buying fish and all those things, we didn't have to do that. There's some camps though where um, only you cook and give you food. It was really hard to really 
feed everybody at the time. And as a matter of fact, too, that there are some persons who will leave in the, the, the camps and go out, and when they come back, it's not lunch time, it's not food time then. And then they would have um, finished all the things and then right. you start making noise and like that. But there are some people who are very lucky to that they, they got houses to stay in with their family, so they didn't go to any camps or anything like that. I, I never went to a shelter. Really? After we left town, mm -hmm. we went out to Kialiakwa and we were staying with a friend in their house. They stayed in those schools for three months. The government put it over the air. Say the volcano is finished and then the evacuated people have to get home. After the, the eruptions and people return, um, they had a lot of cleaning to do because the ash all over. Ash was all about. Even in the house, I, I don't know how the ashes managed to get in the house. Yeah, my name has to go on the galvanized and get water up. They took water. And you were in plenty of the galvanized. I mean, the roof was this thick and ash. I took a hose and I started cleaning, hosing down the place, not realizing that the water was also full of ash. I took days. I took jug water and flow the flow and get broom and sweep out just to get the ash. You know, so you had a lot of cleaning up to do. You had a lot of washing some of the animals because the animals had to be let loose. Let them loose and they never look better. So we lost some. You kind of have to restart. Trouble was, was to know what the rare losses were. So we thought, you know, that we lost maybe a little bit, but in point of fact, it was a hell of a lot when they damaged hit us. Uh, it was almost difficult to recover from it, you know. In fact, it was the end of the estate. It was, it was the, the end, end of, of Orange Hill. In 84, they had to sell it, and it for almost nothing. The heat of the, the ashes scorched up a lot of the things, them. sometimes the banana, them shrinking, the coconuts, them, and so on. It was a very diversified estate. They had cocoa and coffee and, and all those little crops died immediately and the coconut just took longer to die, but they died. Well, you had to make a fresh start. Okay, you have to replant like your vegetables and so on. One of the things that I usually do is to try to tell people you do not know when it would erupt again. So always keep your important items. If in case it erupts, you wouldn't have that time to go and pack up. And so I learned that lesson, you have to be always ready. Because we don't know when, okay? So we always have to have something put away that when anything, you just put it. Get it and you, you lead out. 